Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now this is the 30 minute silver chart and you can see I mentioned last time that I thought the pennant was probably going to hold. So far it has. Now I, I think the trend line that we had drawn was uh, this line here and so you can see that it did break down through that. Kind of interesting the way that it did technically when it got right to that point of that trend line, it, it had this kind of serious breakdown here. But that's pretty common. You could also draw it in to, uh, if, you, if you drew it from the previous one, uh, that would go through this trend line as well. So what does that mean? Well, pennants can extend out for longer periods of time. And that doesn't negate the validity of the pennant. I'm going to show you here on the cryptocurrencies what I'm talking about. So this is a valid pennant. There's no question that it is a series of uh, higher highs and higher lows leading up to a breakout point. And I've explained it so many times why markets trade that way. And it has to do with supply, demand, resistance, and support and just human nature. So I wanted to show you from the cryptocurrencies, actually I spent all day today, uh, I think I drove Jennifer crazy because I spent all day at my computer and I was doing nothing but uh, playing DayZ and going back and forth trading cryptocurrencies. And I want to show you from a chart here of a cryptocurrency that I played today, how this technical pattern works out. So. One of the things that I look for when I'm trading cryptos is, uh, let, me, let me state this first off. Uh, when I'm trading in my Poloniex account, uh, I'm not talking about buying coins to put into wallets. I'm talking about day trading cryptos. When I'm day trading in my Poloniex account, I don't care what the coin is. Uh, I don't plan to hold it till the end of the day. So I don't really care if it's legit or not. It could be fake. Now that's dangerous. You could get stuck with something. There's always, you know, emergencies that can happen. So you have to, you definitely don't want to put the pedal all the way to the metal. In other words, you don't want to use up all your capital. You want to take small bites. But this was a coin that I was watching this morning. It hit the headlines, the headline being the tape, and that is the percentage return and at one point this coin was actually up 500 percent today now i got in around 23 that's kind of a memory on this chart here it's right about here and you can see that i actually followed the the traditional jesse livermore uh, buying strategy which is to buy rising prices to buy on a breakout so i bought this breakout as soon as i saw this breakout i bought it and uh, I added to the position as it was rising. In other words, you don't add to a loser, you add to a winner. Now, all of these trading principles, they go against human nature. Human nature is to um, buy more because it gets cheaper, but that's not how it works in markets. When something goes up, you buy more. And the principle is the same with silver, and that's the exact reason why we have the manipulation that we have in silver, by the way, is because the powers that be know that proper trading is buying a rising market. And if silver ever gets away from them, it's who knows where the top is. So you can see here in this chart, there's a series of those patterns. You have a spike up and then a pennant forming and then a breakout you have a spike up, a pennant forming, and a breakout. And now here we're in another pennant. Now I am, uh, I'm not completely out of this coin. Actually, you can see here, I have 500, I have 498 of this coin, which is worth exactly 0.19 Bitcoin. Now at one point I was carrying quite a bit more. I could have made a lot more profit than I did. I think I only made about a Bitcoin profit or so on this coin. But that's just to show you that, that these market patterns are similar in cryptocurrencies. They're, they're actually similar in any market, as long as it's a real market. And 
That's the problem with silver, and this is going to segue into the main topic of the night, is the fact that silver is no longer a real market. And I'm going to prove that to you uh, because Jennifer and I were listening to the Bill Murphy interview on Silver Doctors, and uh, John, I believe is his name, who's the Silver Doctors guy, uh, he mentioned the silver eagle allocation now if you don't know what that is basically I'm gonna explain it in a nutshell just a summary what it is is the mint has a certain number of buyers who are allowed to get an, a certain amount from them in other words they have these I don't know what the official term is but they're basically registered buyers official buyers so the mint doesn't sell to the public directly as a general rule. They sell to these distributors. These distributors are buyers. Then they sell to the general public, etc. When there is a shortage of silver eagles, when there's a huge demand, uh, then w one way that they deal with that is through their allocation system. So this kind of... Uh, it manages the peaks and the valleys of... Uh, supply and demand by having this allocation. Now, Silver Doctors mentioned the fact that just recently we saw a slowdown in the buying from the uh, of the allocation, and and so there's actually a surplus coming in, and that's what this story is about. This story is from July 11th, and I'm going to read this, and I'm going to try to explain what all this means. So here's the story here. Precious metals update. Silver Eagle allocation exceeds 3.6 million. The U.S. Mint's authorized purchasers. That's the term they use. Authorized purchasers. Now that, that should raise a lot of red flags. And we're going to revisit this when we actually break down what this stuff really means. But that should be a term that raises a lot of red flags in your mind right away authorized purchasers. The U.S. Mint's authorized purchasers bought 250,000 of last week's 2.8 million ounce allocation of 2016 American Eagle Silver Bullion Coins, leaving 2.5 million unsold. This is the most unsold Silver Eagles we've seen so far this year, continuing a recent trend that has seen the Mint's inventory growing with the help of consistent production and softer demand. Sales for the issues dropped sharply, due in part to observance of the 4th of July holiday. Uh, APs, again, authorized purchasers, bought 73% fewer sil silver eagles during this period than the 938,000 ounces reported last week. The unsold pieces have been added to this week's new 1 million coin inventory, bringing the available total for this period to 3.6 million ounces. So let me comment on a couple of things here. First of all, I don't find it surprising that uh, right after silver had its big rise from roughly the 15 area to um, over 20, which is really a 33% increase in price, um, I, I don't find it surprising at all that they would hold off because uh, they're trying to make a profit they don't want to load up on a lot of overpriced inventory. And one way to do that is to buy into a spike. Uh, and like I showed you, <laughs> let me just revisit the uh, Bitmark market here. There were people here who bought into a spike. Now, those people may only have to wait a couple days. They may only have to wait you know, a week, or they may have to wait many, many months. Now, if you're a person who has inventory and it and it has a cost of carrying it that's not something that you want to do so it's not surprising to me that they would be a little bit uh, slow on the trigger to buy after prices had just risen 33 percent now the other point I wanted to make about these numbers here is they're treating this number as if it's a big number I, and just to put this in perspective 2.5 million ounces at current prices is fifty million dollars. Fifty million dollars isn't even chump change. It 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 isn't even the interest on chump change. It is an insignificant, and it really is uh, less than a rounding error. 
as far as world finances go. So the fact that there's 2.5 million unsold is really, it doesn't mean anything in the scheme of things. And the last thing I'll say on that is that it may be possible that uh, with the allocation uh, that other people have looked elsewhere. Because if you think about it, if 60 million is all you can spend and you're a billionaire, you might want to get something else. So let's continue. One ounce Silver Eagles have sold 26 million pieces so far this year. The Mint remains on pace to have its biggest sales year ever for Silver Bullion and has already exceeded 56.3% of last year's record-breaking total of 47 million ounces of Silver Eagles sold. We're currently 52.8% of the way through 2016. So that's the summary that they give there. Now, I wanted to dig deeper into this issue of allocation because, for me, this, this really gets at the heart of everything that we're talking about. They dance around the topic. They try to explain it in ways that are acceptable to the common man, but the reality is that allocation is simply government management or central planning. And we can see that here in this definition here. This is the best definition I could find. There are others out there, but this is the definition of resource allocation. Resource allocation is the assignment of available resources to various uses. In the context of an entire economy, resources can be allocated by various means, such as markets or central planning. It, now, I find it interesting that, and you know my opinion of Wikipedia and Snopes and the rest, these are all left-wing controlled sites that just about everything is left-wing. Uh, whether it's Google, Facebook, anything, Twitter, it's all controlled by leftists or Marxists, communists, whatever you want to call them. So you you can't get, you know, they, they rewrite history, they change the definitions of words, they're uh, basically lunatics. But just going by the definitions that we have here, I find it interesting that the phraseology is that these resources can be allocated by various means, such as markets or central planning, when it should say can only be allocated in two ways, either by markets or by central planning. These are the only two. There's no third alternative. Either you have free markets where people using their own money, making their own decisions, about what they want to buy and sell in any amount they want to buy and sell it at uh, based on price, that's a market. Central planning, that's allocation. And that's what we have in the Silver Eagle market. Now, why are they doing that? The reason they're doing that is because they do not want Silver Eagles to set the price of silver. Because if the demand for silver eagles sets the price for silver, in other words, uh, what the mint's response should be to very, very high demand is raising the price of silver eagles. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, it's not that nefarious. They're a government agency. They're trying to serve the people. No, I don't believe that. Uh, they're a government agency, and they're trying to serve the bankers. Uh, they're, they're not interested in giving people a cheap price. Rationing doesn't give you a low price. Rationing gives you a shortage. And that's what we're seeing in Venezuela today, a shortage of food. So these people, these socialists, communists, Marxists, haters of free markets, they're destroyers, they're destroyers of nations, destroyers of people, they're evil people. But these are the two alternatives that you have free markets or central planning. What we have in the Silver Eagle market is central planning. That's why we have this term allocation. That's why this is used and has become a common term. Yes, you will see periods where there is a, a, a shortage of buyers at the allocation which is what we've seen recently. And it's trumpeted, it's big news, but really it's just uh, the people who are 
allowed to buy the authorized purchasers again authorized allowed they're official it's government run the authorized purchasers have backed off in my opinion thinking that we may have a price drop but uh, as uh, silver doctors points out they also may be accumulating for the next big rise and then they can sell into that and make a nice profit either way uh, what we have here with the Silver Eagle allocation is central planning. Uh, we don't have free markets and the last thing the US government wants is for explosive demand and again as I pointed out uh, 2.5 million Silver Eagles is only 50 million dollars. The last thing the US government wants is demand for its Silver Eagle coin to be the cause of the silver price going to the stratosphere. And we'll talk to you next time.